Hi, my name is Oliver, and in this video, I'll teach you how to animate a fake 3D Rubik's Cube in After Effects. So to get started, I've illustrated this simple Rubik's Cube. It basically consists of these nine squares just lined up, and then there are a bunch of different colors. I've just chosen this color palette up here. You can choose whatever colors you'd like, but preferably you should choose six different colors that usually what's on a Rubik's Cube. If you want to support the channel, you can go down in the description and download the project file for this tutorial. That way you can use my illustration to animate this, or you can take a deeper look at my keyframing. Before we get started animating, I quickly want to mention the sponsor of this video, which happens to be Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform which has thousands of courses covering all of the creative fields such as illustration, design, video editing, and most importantly, animation. I can personally recommend the course on animating with ease by Jake Bartlett, which covers the essentials of how to use the graph editor properly, as well as Fraser Davison's course on cinematic character animation, which was my very first introduction to that subject. If you want to learn about text animation, I have also created a course on animating text using shape layers, which goes into the depths of squash and stretch, as well as a retro 80s text course for a more stylized look. Right now, the first 500 people that click the link in the description will get their two first months of Skillshare Premium for free. Now you can see I have my different layers down here and I can just start off by hiding everything. I have the top and the bottom. The reason why I have grouped them up is because we're not going to animate these. We're going to animate one part of the Rubik's Cube sort of rotating and then we can duplicate that part and use it over and over again. Then we have the center part. This is what we're going to animate. We have a shadow for the sensor part. That's when it's coming from the right side and turning towards the left. And we also have a highlight, which is just in the opposite direction. At last, we have the colors up here and that's basically what we're going to work with. So I'll start out by pre-composing everything except for the top and the bottom. So select it, right click, pre-compose, and we can just call this rotating cube. Can open up that layer. And I want to start out by making the colors a guide layer. That way, when we look in the main composition, we won't be able to see the colors and they won't be rendered. So right click the color and then we'll go to guide layer. And as you can see, it's only visible in that composition. So what we're going to do now is take this sensor part and duplicate it. And then we'll drag that to the bottom and call that sensor underscore back. The reasoning behind this is when we sort of rotate this towards the left, then we want a new side to appear from the right. So we can just hide the back for now and start with the center. Go up to the pan behind tool so we can adjust the anchor point. Just click and hold down command and control to snap it to the left center. Then we'll hide that and enable the center back. And just do the same, but this time to the right. So now we can show each of these and we're going to animate them. So we'll start with the center, press SS in scale and add a keyframe. Now we have to unlock the constraint proportions because otherwise it will be scaled proportionally. So click that button, then we can go roughly one second ahead. That's just easy to work with. And we'll scale this all the way down to zero in the X scale. And now you can see we have the back part and we can go down to that Press S as in scale and start by adding a keyframe. Unlock the constraint proportions. And now when we move to the other side, we want this to be at zero in the X scale. So that way you can just see that the sides are sort of changing here. And right now it doesn't look that great, but that's because we haven't adjusted everything to its sort of final point. So we can go ahead and add the shadow and highlight. So we have to imagine that we want the highlight to be on the left side. So we can go to the very start, just enable the highlight and link that to our center piece. This way it's scaled down with the center piece and we can animate its opacity by pressing T. And we want it to be at 0% at the start because that's just from the front. Add a keyframe and then towards the end here, we want it to be perhaps 80%. So that way it's just easier to see that it's rotating because that sort of highlight is changing. So when we have done this, we need to do the opposite with the shadow. So enable that, go to the very end. So we have it lined up with our right side here. We take the shadow and then we parent it to the sensor back. 
That way you can see that it moves with the center back and we just have to animate the opacity. So it has to be the most at the start here and then it has to go down to zero when it's at the front. So that way you can see that the left side sort of gets brighter and the right side is darker and that also gets to the normal level at the end here. So that's quite simple. We can take all of the keyframes, press F9 to ease, ease them, that way it's just a bit smoother. But the thing is that when something is rotating like this in 3D space, it will actually appear larger towards the center. So right here, everything would actually be wider in the X scale. So the way that we can fix this is that we create a new null object. So we go to layer, new, null object. And right here, we just want to parent everything to the null object. So select everything that isn't parented yet. So these two, you can see these other ones are already parented to the center and the center back. So we don't want to ruin that parent link. Drag it up and call this scale. So now if I press S as in scale and adjust the X scale, you can see that it scales up and down everything. So add a keyframe, go to the very center. And because we're working within that one second, it's quite easy to find the center of that animation that's at 12 frames because this composition is 24 frames a second. So now we can drag it out and scale it up a bit. Go to the very end and set it back to 100. So now we can ease these keyframes. And if I press N here, I can trim the work area. Just drag it in one more frame and this should actually loop perfectly. So as you can see, that sort of creates that fake 3D rotation. But now we want to change the colors. So we don't want the colors to be the same on each side. Therefore, we can just go to a point where we can see all of the colors. Select the back part, go to the search bar and search for color. And here we can simply use the eyedropper tool to select some new colors. So really it doesn't matter what you're selecting. We just want to select something new. So it can be something like this. And that way you can see that the side is changing. And when we go to the main composition, you can see that it actually looks like the side is rotating. But now we want to do it with multiple sides and we don't want to repeat this process all over. We want to make it quite simple. So what we're going to do is actually go into this pre-comp and then we're going to make a control layer for the colors. So we'll go to layer, new, null object, call this colors, and I'm just going to change it to a yellow so it's actually distinguishable from everything else and just hide it because we're not going to move the layer, we're just going to add a bunch of fill effects and link them up with the colors. So we'll go to effects and presets and we'll search for fill, drag that onto the layer, and then we can call this the center and underscore one because that's the first color and we're counting these from left to right because that's also what you do when you're reading, you read from left to right. So we can press command or control D to duplicate this and we just duplicate it a bunch of times. And then the fourth time we want to call this the back underscore one and that just refers to the other side here. So there's also three sort of squares or cubes to duplicate it two times. And now we just have to select the right colors. So make sure that the colors are not affected by the highlight or shadow when you're selecting them. So I'm just going to the very start. And here I'll be selecting them one by one, just so we have the right colors. Then go down and go to the very end. And here I can select the three last colors, just like this. So now we want to link up the colors. And to do that, we need to find the colors in the layers. So we select the layers and search for color. Then we go to the very first color, hold the option click, and we have to select that colors layer up here. And then we simply just link this blue color to the blue color up in our control layer. And that way you can see that if we were to change this to, let's say some red color, it would also change here. So really, you just have to repeat this process for all colors and make sure that they are linked properly. And this may take some time, so I'm just going to skip through it real quick. So now you can see that all of the colors are completely linked up. And if I were to change anything, they would also change in the composition. And that way it's quite easy to alter between them. So what we're going to do now is figure out what we want to rotate next. So you can see it starts out with this rotation. 
Then perhaps we want to do a rotation in the center here and then one to the left. So we simply want to find our rotating cube composition up here. Press command and control D to duplicate it. Drag it down into our composition. And then we want to find the point where the first animation is done. It's right around here. Then we can start our second animation. And here we have to imagine that we want it to rotate downwards from the center and therefore we should be rotating it minus 90 degrees. So press R as in rotation. Then we go negative 90. So right around here, we just type it in to be exact. But there's one problem here. You can see that the colors don't line up. And now we have to remember that the first color is blue. That's the one that's supposed to be on the left. If we go into the composition, we see that's the blue one. And then it's the green and the white. But they're actually supposed to be red, white, and yellow. So let's change that. Go into the composition, choose the colors. And then we choose the red, the white, and the yellow. And after that, we can choose the last colors here. So maybe we want them to be something like, let's say blue, green, and white. So if we go into the main composition again, you can see that we have that rotating part and that works flawlessly. So really, it's quite easy to duplicate this animation. It just takes a bit of time to create it from the very start. You can see that this is essentially what I did for this other animation. And there's six duplicates on top of each other. And I'm just making sure that for the last rotations here, they're rotating back to the original state. And therefore, you can see that it loops perfectly. And also, I've just added a bit of movement. So a bit of anticipation and overshoot when the rotations are about to take place. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, post a comment down below and tell me if you have any issues with this tutorial or if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. If you create anything from this, make sure to share it with me on Instagram at Oliver Randolph and make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now, till next time.